the lack of industry standards in sales. Dean Mannix, CEO of Sales ITV and industry expert in this field, shares with us his views on professionalism. So Dean, thank you so much for your time on our conversation series with National Sales Institute. As a sales professional yourself, I just want to ask you, what do you think is the current perception of the sales function in society? Well, I think the research is pretty clear that, that most people, when they think of salespeople, don't associate any or associate very little trust with salespeople or people who are trying to sell them. But then it's interesting, I think the great salespeople, most people don't think of them as, as salespeople. They think of them as partners, they think of them as consultants, they think of them as the person at XYZ Company who really helped me out. So, um, you know, so definitely the perception of those that are in sales, which obviously impacts who joins the profession, um, how proud people in the profession are, uh, is very poor. There's no doubt about that. So we're talking about professional standards or some type of code of, of practice. Do you think there is one at the moment for the sales function? I know other, other uh, business functions have them. Do you think sales has one? Well, not if you compare it to something like a CPA or, um, you know, or I'm an ex-lawyer. So not if you compare it to, you know, your, your requirements to remain a lawyer and the CPD points required, et cetera, et cetera. So there isn't. I would imagine that many of the larger global sales training companies would, would probably try to convince you that they have in place a set of standards and procedures and behaviours uh, that they expect everyone to follow. But I really don't think there's anything that resembles a, a genuine qualification that would create a sense of kudos and a sense of pride and a sense of confidence from a customer. There's, there's nothing in the market. So do you think there should be one? Yeah, really challenging question. Um, part of me says yes and part of me says no. So the part of me that says, you know, and playing devil's advocate here, very, very challenging because there's so much variability in what constitutes the role of sales. You know, what, what's fascinating for me is the number of, People who are supposed experts and out there telling everybody how to sell and what to sell and the way the world's changed and everything's inbound now and rah, rah, rah. And they're completely ignoring the, you know, you said 1.35 million people, salespeople in Australia. I'm betting 850,000 of them are out in the Western suburbs in a working out of an industrial shed going back and forth selling widgets. They're not selling software. They're not selling all the fancy, sexy stuff. And so it's, you know, first, it's, well, who are we going to accredit? Like how are we only be going to define what a salesperson is and who a salesperson is? So that makes it very, very challenging. I think the second thing is, is who, who's, who's got the right to accredit? So obviously, you know, I'm, I'm very well educated. I'm back in the education system, starting my DBA in July. Um, I'm a big believer that there's a lot of value to, to be achieved by studying um, and gaining recognition for that study. But if universities start accrediting who's a great salesperson and who's not, well, then we get into some pretty scary territory, don't we? Because academia is so far removed from the front line that the probability of the accreditation being meaningless to the salesperson, and in fact, counterintuitive to good practice, is very, very high. So I'm all for it, but the challenge is getting it right. And the challenge is, well, who's got the, who's got the credibility to genuinely say, we are going to be the accrediting body? Mm, that's a really, really interesting angle. So therefore, with obviously there's no um, formal qualification in, in the system at the moment. Is there a quasi standard you believe salespeople adopt some form of code of practice? Do you, do you believe there's a there's a voluntary standard out there? No, definitely not. No, there's so much variability and there's variability inside organisations. And Look, if you go into a room of 10 salespeople in the same organisation and ask them to write down their definition of what sales is, you will get 10 different answers and you'll get five very, very different variations of those answers. If you then ask their manager what they think sales is, you'll get something different again. And then if you ask the executive general manager who's four layers away what it is, head of HR, you'll get different variations again. And so when there's not even a clear definition of what sales is, uh, in the marketplace, let alone by industry, uh, it's going to be pretty challenging to sort of figure that out. So is there a level of influence that needs to happen upstream as well, beyond the sales team, upstream in the decision-making, you know, rooms 
to educate those people on the value of the sales person? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, once again, it, most sales leadership or what people would call sales leadership uh, is, is actually damaging human beings on the front line. And so much of it is still completely attached to and built around what's in the spreadsheet. And even the organisations that are pumping out that they're all about people and they've got these fantastic processes and these educational programs and they're all these things to all these people, when you get on the inside of them, they're often the worst offenders of the quota-based, you know, Excel spreadsheet-based approach to sales management, which is not leadership. And so it's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to change the conversation up a level. Um, but once again, you can have whatever conversation you want up there. If you don't have something that's attractive to the front line, it will meet way more resistance than it should or could. And we could actually disenfranchise people with the concept of an accreditation, which once again is, you know, one of my real fears for this process is that um, I, I was really disgusted to be straight up about 10 years ago when uh, many members of the, of the RTO space were rape pillaging and plundering around the cert for in sales. They were basically going out, selling it to business owners on the basis of we'll give you 2,000 of the 4,000 and we'll take $2,000 and we'll race your people through an absolutely crap sales training program, anoint them with a cert for and tell them that they're ready to sell. And to me, that did a lot of damage because it actually produced a lot of people who thought that they had a qualification that was valuable, couldn't sell very effectively and were exposed to rubbish sales training. And so we've got to be really careful, you know, that we make sure if you're going this way that whatever you do has real credibility in the hands of the people that are going to be using it out in the field, um, not just kudos for the people up the line who say, look at all of our people who are now accredited. I think there's absolutely, a, there needs to be a connection between the reality and the achievements there. Dean, to wrap up, what is your view on the future of sales? Where do you see it going? How do you see it behaving in the future? We are a lot further away from machines taking over the sales role than the marketing would suggest. Okay, you know, I, I was, I, I've been sitting in so many presentations for the last decade, more than decade, where people were telling me next year the sales role is gone, it's all over, forget about it. And the funny thing is, when you get inside the companies that are saying those things in their marketing, actually they're the most sales focused and outbound call focused and cold calling focused companies in the world. So we're a lot further away. Um, there, is, there is absolutely plenty of time to develop an amazing career in sales for anybody who's involved in it. And, and, and the sales role will morph, you know, but the reality is humans are still humans. Humans still have the same six basic needs. Humans still have a desire to be educated so they make smarter choices. Um, human beings are leveraging social proof more, more, more than they previously were because they've got access to tools like Google rankings and other things but the simple reality is, is that as long as companies need to compete and as long as the market is becoming more and more competitive which it is and as long as complexity is making it harder and harder for clients to figure out which solution to go with there is always going to be a role for a great salesperson who can step into that space thank you so much enjoy life on the coast i know you're about to get battered with some rain or hailstorms. <laughs> i'm loving this virtual world that we're in it's great Pleasure thank you dean thank you so much